Here we are with Shorai battery number two. I contacted them a week ago, the Friday before last, uh, in an email, and then they replied to me on Monday. I had made them an offer that the only way I would consider retesting another identical Shorai battery was if they would cover my costs that I had to pay out for a brand new UASA plus shipping the old one back, which would be, that would mean to me that I would say, take off $75 off of the price of this battery and send it to me and believe it or not they responded and agreed they took the $75 off and sent me another battery so I'm good for my word so we're going to test this one out and see they according to them you can charge it at a 2 amp rate up to 14.4 volts on a standard charger provided you don't use the desulfonation mode and it should get up to full charge so that, and the guy promised me that this time he would pull one off the shelves and actually make sure it was set at a full charge before it was sent to me. So I would expect a voltage somewhere in the range, since 14.4 is max charge, I would expect some drop back in voltage, maybe 13.8 or so. So let's actually put it on my test meter here. This is a field piece meter made by actually uh, the guys that used to work at Fluke Meters. So I consider this meter, and I've used it a lot, I consider it to be fairly active, so ac accurate. So let's try to do this with uh, one with two with one hand and hold the camera here. Okay, I got it on. Let's see what do we have. Thirteen point seven five. Okay, that's acceptable. I, I'd call that thirteen point eight. So I will agree this battery at least has ninety nine percent charge, if not a hundred. I would call this one hundred percent charged up. So we're going to give it the best test. I'm going to not go through all of the stuff with reinstalling it. If you want to look at my previous battery, sure I fail, and you can look through all the installation procedure and information I give you about the battery and how lightweight it is compared to a standard UASA battery. You can go through that in the other one. The other thing the guy claimed, and I did not find this with the first battery, is he claimed that the colder it gets, the better this um, battery performs in each subsequent crank. So in other words, if I put this in the bike right now and I've let this cool down to 22 degrees, there's no heater going on in my shop, it's 22 degrees right now. The battery's at 22 degrees because it's set out here a few hours. According to him, if I don't initially start on the first crank or two, it will actually start putting out more amps and give me better cranking because the battery itself will heat up. So we will also see that I'm going to purposely do this test exactly the way I did last time on my bike. What I am going to do is I am going to make sure the bike does not fire the first three times. I'm not going to put the choke on, and as cold as it is, I can guarantee you this bike will not start. So I'm going to do three short cranks of about 15 seconds or less, and then I'm going to put full choke on, and let's see if this battery can actually fire the bike up. So I will be back shortly. Okay, battery is installed. When I do finally put everything back together. If I do decide to keep this battery in the bike, I will put a piece of foam there so that it fits properly. All the dimensions are fine except for it just needs to be slightly taller and that they give you pieces of foam to make that up. So right now I've got it tightened down in place. I'm not going to put anything else together just in case this battery is no better than the first one and I have to end up putting my UASA battery in. Now the other thing they say is in cold weather to turn your bike on and give it 30 seconds with the headlight on. Well, unfortunately, the way my bike is, until the engine starts running, it keeps the headlight off to try to protect your battery. So I can leave it on for about 30 seconds just with the regular running lights on. And maybe hopefully that will give the battery a little bit more of a boost. And I've got the backlight here. So I'm gonna give it about 30 seconds too and see if that'll warm the battery up and help. I don't know if I specifically waited 30 seconds doing that, maybe with the lower draw, maybe even waiting a minute would be a good idea. But supposedly the draw on the battery helps it self-heat, and then you get better cold starting. I've given it a little bit over a minute time, with the ignition in the on position and the lights, except for the headlamp which won't turn on until the bike starts. We're going to give it no choke so that the first three short cranks I can just do well I 
Evidently, something else is going on then. I would expect it to at least try. Let's put the UASA in. Now we have the UASA battery in the bike. We're going to flip the switch, turn on the ignition, and here we go. I'm turning the choke off on this one. Let's just see how it cranks first. Uh, okay, my best guess at this point was I had one of the biggest coincidences happen in a long time. This is the starter solenoid to the bike. Here is bypassing it. I have actually cranked the bike over doing that before. And as you notice, there is no sound of a starter turning. So, it could have been, just by coincidence, at the same time I bought and installed that last Jorai battery that my starter decided to give out. Because I can't see any way that battery, even if it was running maybe a volt more than a typical battery, could have damaged the starter. I don't really think that's a possibility. Because the charging cycle on this bike uh, brings batteries up to about 14.5 volts. So I am guessing that maybe it is just one big giant coincidence. And I have a starter that just finally, after 21 years, has decided to give up the ghost. Because right now I have the uh, brand new Wasa battery in here. And 